Hey guys, thank you so much for viewing our show and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We thank you so much and following us on Instagram. Keep up the good work. Also, please leave comments um, at our Instagram handle at the Women Behind the Legends and also our YouTube channel, the Women Behind the Legends. Yes. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. And if you missed our show last week, we were talking about the impact of reality shows and why we decided to do this instead of doing TV. Not that we didn't want to go on TV, but the fact was they wanted us to be messy and we weren't about that. So if you were not here last week, please, please go to our YouTube channel and check it out. You will be blessed by it. So ladies, how are we doing today? I, I'm good. Hey, uh, great. I, I was thinking today, I was going and doing my shopping today, my last minute shopping, and I, you know, I was thankful, you know, because I was in Manhattan today and I was going by and I saw homeless people. And I thought about how grateful I was to be in a position to have a roof over my head and, and you know, close my back and be able to purchase food today so that I can um, fix um, Thanksgiving dinner. And it, it just made me think about my life you know, and how, where I've come from to where I am today. And, um, you know, I wanted to share with you today, you know, something that I felt molded me as a woman, you know, the woman that I am today. When I was um, two weeks old, well, first let me say that um, my, both my parents, and I'm being very candid right now, were drug addicts. Mm. And mm -hmm. my mother was 14 when she had me. She was 15, actually, when she had me. My father was about 16. And um, when I was two weeks old, my cousin came and got me and took me for the day. And when she tried to bring me back to my mom that day, my mom, God rest her soul, told her mama, which was my grandmother, said to keep her. Mm -hmm. And my cousin was like, what? And she's like, mama said, keep her. <clears throat> and my cousin took me back home. And I stayed with them. They raised me. Her and her mom mm -hmm. raised me from when I was two weeks old until I was about nine. Because then I was crazy and I wanted to go back and live with my mom. And um, it's crazy because I could have been a product of my environment we were on welfare. Once I moved to back with my mom, my aunt's home, who I call mommy, was stable. She worked. We had food on the table. We had a really nice apartment. It was clean all the time. There was rules, bedtimes, everything. But when I went to move with my mom, it was dysfunctional as heck. Mm. You know, no bedtime, no, <laughs> no dinner time. I was going to the store to pick up 40 ounce beers, because back then you could do that at a young age. 40 ounce OE was her choice of drink. Nice. And a pack of Newport's 100. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I had to, to, to endure, and I stayed there until we went to live with my, my grandmother, her mother at the time. But I endured so much. And it's like, I could have ended up, well, I did end up having a baby at 16, going on 17, like she did. But I, I went to school, I got my education, and I said I didn't want to be like her. I didn't want to be like her. And the problem, I'm thankful <clears throat> that I am the woman today, I am today, but one of the problems I'm having, and I wanted to talk to my sisters about this, is I still haven't been able to forgive her. And she's been mm -hmm. dead for 11 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when her, her birthday comes up, I post something on Facebook, happy birthday to her. <laughs> I put... Um, Mother's Day stuff up. My father, I do it here and there because he wasn't around. And I remember him being on dope and taking me to the movies and nodding off. And I'm thinking as a young girl, we went to see The Wiz. I'm thinking, oh, wow. Daddy is working really hard, you know, not mm. knowing he was a dope fiend. And I remember when he bought my bike <clears throat> for my birthday, taught me how to ride it and everything, and then came and borrowed it and then told me someone stole it, but he really sold it. These were the examples that I had in my life. And I look at myself today, and, and that's why I can be proud of myself. And it took me a long time to be proud of myself, that I did get an education, I got a four-year degree, that I am a writer, and then I was able to write a play and do the things that I've done. Yes. Yeah. So 
Um, it could have went <clears throat> so many different ways. And I'm just trying to find, his birthday is coming up next month. And I'm just trying to find the, I'm just trying to find something within me to be able to forgive them for not loving me more than they love the drugs. Mm -hmm. That can I, hurts can so I, bad. Can I address that? Mm -hmm. I've had cousins that lived with me my whole life because my aunt and her husband were drug addicts. And I was blessed to see them choose to use it as a reason not to fall back because kids if their parents are doing it, they think it's okay. So it can go either way. They could say, my mother did it, so it's okay. Or my mother was like that, and I don't want to be like that. I want to say to you, as a strong woman that you are, when you do find the forgiveness, and you may find it sooner than you think, understand that God has a plan for everything. And they were children. Mm -hmm. They made mistakes. Look at kids that you have, your children, at their age, and think about how naive they are, and understand they didn't know what they were doing, but she did you a favor. She knew not to keep you. Mm -hmm. She sent mm -hmm. you where you were safe. So instead of looking at what all you went through, and I'm not, I didn't live your life, so I can't tell you how to feel, just, I listened to that story and said, wow, even as a child, she knew she couldn't take care of you. Yeah. So you like, why didn't mommy keep me? Mommy wanted more for you. Yeah. And you got more in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As far as being crazy and wanting to go with mommy, everybody wants to be with mommy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the situation. Now I applaud you for, for you know, being the woman you are. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Mm -mm. I'm going to need more liquor for this segment. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> Is my hell coming out now? Damn. God, I didn't expect to, to even go there because I have air hug, air hug. Yes. Air hug. yes. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> Lynette, squeeze. We like hugging you like now. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. You need something for my story, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just, mm. just want to make you smile. Sorry. Thank you. You did. You did. <laughs> and I and what you just said actually made a lot of sense. I never, yeah. truthfully, I never thought about it like that. Mm. I always thought she was selfish. Mm -mm. You know, very selfish, and I, I disliked her for a very long time. Yeah. You know. But think about what you said in the house where you were safe. There were rules. These kids, like my mother, gets on my nerves. She makes me go to sleep. Yada. Kids want rules. I have a cousin who's the, my aunt that was a crackhead, her daughter said she wished her mother made her come home at night. Mm. Mm. She wished, some, like, it, yeah. I was like, but I was complaining because my mother had rules and I had a curfew and I was like, this is some shit. None of y'all got to come in. She was like, I wish my mother cared. And that's how kids see it too, is this that parents true. just don't care about them. So that's why they're out in the streets. You know, when they get older, they look back on it. They thought it was fun then. But then when they look back at it now, as adults, they're like, did she even really care? Like everybody else's parents cared. They wanted them home when the street lights came on. I was still out there, you know? Mm -hmm. She didn't care if I ate. She didn't care if I took a bath, you know? So yeah, I, I, I completely agree with everything that Tajiri said. Yeah. That one day she sent you back, mm -hmm. she probably spent that whole day thinking what would be best for you. Mm -hmm. And as a mom, she made the best decision to you where you were safe. Yep. Yep. And now look at you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hotness, Danny the awesomeness. <laughs> That's Danny right. Bottle. Can't open a bottle. Yeah, open a bottle. Yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't even open a bottle of juice. <laughs> but well, we love you, Lynette. Hey, girl. I love y'all too, and I'm mad at y'all all drinking. I can't get in my bottle. <laughs> well, I'm having tea. <laughs> I can't get in my bottle. I, I think I'm good now, though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all good. You know, when you started off saying how, how you're thankful for, you know, everything that you have, you should be. And it opened my eyes, you know, because I'm very, very thankful for everything that I've actually gone through. Because when you say um, you don't know, when you look to look at you, we don't know what you've gone through. You know what I mean? It's like when we look at you, we see this strong, amazing woman. And 
you are a strong, amazing woman, but we didn't know, I didn't know that about you, you know, and you just shared that with us. And with, for me, I'm very grateful and thankful for, for my life. I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful to be here and a part of this uh, sisterhood with you guys because we're able to share and go back and forth. You know, when it touched me when you said um, how you couldn't forgive your mom. You know, I grew up in a single family home. Uh, my mother had her children at the age of 16 years old. Um, I ended up having my first son at the age of 16 years old, you know, and we grew up kind of tough a little bit in California. And my sister held a grudge against my mother because she didn't like the lifestyle that we lived because we struggled. We were basically, I guess we, we was poor pretty much. We struggled. We single family home we food stamps the whole nine that's how we kind of live right we had my mom had six kids oh wow five kids i'm sorry because our older brother died but for you to wow. say that i never hated my mom because i always knew that she was trying to do her best for us but my sister never forgave my mother until a little bit maybe some years ago and when you said that it just triggered a conversation that me and my sister had because when you hold on to unforgiveness you can't progress, you know, and you have to really like let go. And I had to, um, I started to hold a grudge against my sister because she was holding a grudge against my mother and God rest my mother's soul. Again, to jury, to, excuse me, to jury just hit the, hit it on the nail said that, you know, we don't know whatever our parents had gone through, they did the best that they could do. And me as a mom right now, I'm doing the best that I can do for my sons as well. So some, I have made mistakes along the way. I know I haven't been a perfect mother. At least, you know, I want to say I have been a perfect mother, but I haven't been a perfect mother, but I'm a good mother. You know, I'm a great mother, you know, and my kids, they, they forgive me. So you release it and just keep moving forward the way you're going right now, because this right here is where we're supposed to be. You're supposed to be right here with us. Yep. We're supposed to be pouring into you. And you pouring into us and we loving on you and vice versa. So this is a great place and I'm excited to be here and share my story with you guys because my life has not been all that great and all that easy, but I'm in an awesome place right now because the struggles <laughs> that I've gone through has gotten me to where I am today. And I can stand bold, you know, right now and say, you know what, you are an overcomer and you're, I'm still overcoming things at this present time in my life. So, um, <coughs> We're awesome. All of us are awesome. What amazing stories that made us the women that we are today. So, I'm so awesome. And Corey, I have to say, this is the first time that I heard your California accent. <laughs> <laughs> like, you heard my California accent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, can I um, interject? Absolutely. I just, I just wanted to say that I grew up in a two-parent home with a bishop as a father and my mother worked for the Department of Corrections. Mm. And I didn't have, you know, I had family and I had love. So it kind of touches my heart when I hear you ladies talking about how your mothers weren't there for you. And it makes me realize how blessed I am mm -hmm. to have my mother there and especially my father because I always grew up as a bigger girl. And he always instilled in me that I was beautiful and I was smart and I was the most beautiful girl on this, in this planet. So that gave me all the self-esteem in the world. And now as a mother, I try to teach my daughters that. I have a, a daughter and she's a plus size girl. And then I have a little skinny heifer. That's my other daughter. And, you know, she, she, she eats whatever she wants to eat. And, and we you know, hate her. She still <laughs> we hate her. Yeah, exactly. Like Shanette. We hate her. Get that baby alone. So, <laughs> big glass of water. <laughs> my goal was in life to make sure that all the little girls that look like me has some type of self-esteem to let them know yes. that you are beautiful and you are loved no matter what your size is, no matter what your shade of skin color is, no matter if you have money or if you don't have money, whatever, you know, you don't have to wear name brand clothes and stuff like that to be beautiful. You can walk around in, in Target clothes and still be beautiful. So I think that you ladies have come a long way 
And mm-hmm. I think as we grow and bond with each other, we're going to become even stronger. And, you know, it was like, in these reality shows, everybody is a size six. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody is a has plastic surgeon put on. Yeah. Right, right. Everybody <laughs> has breast <laughs> implants and they have yeah. the butt implants. And, you know, so I think for me coming along, I'm not a size six. <laughs> So Neither I'm out I. here for the big girls. I <laughs> so I don't want to be a size six. That's too skinny. Why are you shutting that? That's so what it is. To each his own. To each his own. Well, I'm working my way back to get become a six again. Wherever you comfortable at. To I'm each his own. <laughs> If but your man like it, that's all that matter, girl. That's, that's right. Hey, <laughs> but what, what you just said, what you just said, um, Kiki, that's so profound because yeah. there's so many women that are plus size that are ashamed to be plus size. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's because of them. It's because of them being teased. It starts in a household, like you said. You have right. parents that instilled in you the beauty, the beautiful person that you were. Or are actually, I'm sorry, that the beautiful person that you are, and that is what you held on to. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's what's helped you. And and what you just said can help a lot of people. And anyone who meets her, image issues. What were you saying, Mm -hmm. Tana? Anyone who meets Kiki, that's what you immediately feel from her. Super confident. She's a sexy beast. She walks in the room. Everyone's gonna pay attention to her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like she's like. And, and she owns it. And you don't even, when I first met her, size was not something I looked at. What I looked at was, oh my gosh, she is so beautiful and she has mm-hmm. the eyes. Absolutely, and absolutely. With the makeup and the hair yeah. change. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she is so sexy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that where she once came from? <laughs> That's not where she came from? She said, eh. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, because you know, it's about empowering women and stuff. She's the boss. Because she's the boss. She's the boss. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully with me and if and when we do get picked up, I'm not saying if, I'm That's saying right. when we That's do right. get picked up, yeah. that I will be representing for the big girls out there with confidence to let y'all know that you can be a size one mm. or you could be a size 18 and you're yep. still going to be beautiful. So Absolutely. just hold your uh, that played a major you know, role in my household coming up because my twin sister and I were always small and we have a sister who's a, who's a year older than us who was always big. Mm. And as we got older, one day she just said to me, I hated y'all as kids. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And I always wanted to be her. Wow. So I always mm. felt mm. I wanted to be her. And, you know, it shows you how we we're always, you know, our worst critics. Mm-hmm. But she, she mm-hmm. the beautiful ones, and she hated us. Wow, wow, that's true. Yeah, but I was going to tell Kiki too that 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 she may not be when she says she's representing the only one because I'm tired of dieting and I'm tired of exercising. <laughs> and I just want to be me. I want to be able to eat what I want to eat. And, and just chill out. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm well, Kiki, uh, listening to your story um, and the other ladies, um, it's it. They really had me thinking about how fortunate I feel, how thankful I am. Um, I grew up in a one-parent home, and you know, my mom, she was a good mom. I mean, my family. I was blessed to grow up in the family that I grew up in. I mean, everybody. We had love for each other. We always had each other's back. But when Kiki was talking about uh, her father and how her father instilled in her and gave her her self-esteem, I think that would probably be one of the things that I was, I feel like I missed out on growing up. You know, I had access to my father, but he he wasn't there. He didn't live in the home and it it wasn't like a day-to-day interaction with him. And I feel like, you know, a lot of us women have daddy issues, you know, and I didn't realize I had daddy issues until I became older, until I became a woman. But um, still, even with that, um, so now you got to. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's part of my daddy issues. You got a big daddy issue now. You got a big daddy issue now. But um, yes, and I'm very, very thankful to have him in my life. I mean, he's he's been very understanding of my daddy issues. <laughs> Is he your daddy? He's your daddy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So with that said, I mean, I'm I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my mother and my father. I'm 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 glad they were they were there for me. And um it's just I guess if there was a message or anything that I I would really want to say to people is that, you know, to fathers is that it's important just as important that you be in your daughter's life as you know as it is your son's life especially when they're young and i take pride in my family that's why i enjoy spending time with you know my husband and my son is so important to me for him uh for my son to have his dad in his life mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. fathers are very important they don't get a whole lot of recognition yeah. yes they are yeah the good ones don't. yeah yeah mm -hmm. That's very yeah. important, like you said, to have your father in your life. And unfortunately, all of us didn't have it. But, you know, we right. would better boyfriends. You know, I'm, I know you're happy with your husband now. Oh, uh, absolutely. But I know the examples that my mother showed me in men were not good. Yeah, I can say the so same. Mm -hmm. I so wish, I wish she had better examples. And then I would have picked better boyfriends, you know. But it took a while for me to get to, to a point where I knew, okay, this is not the right way to go. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, and then I found the man who knows about things. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were dressing in that way. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I hear breaking news. <laughs> Pain a session. A book is out. This is it. Some people hate dealing with the human resources department. But have you ever wondered what really goes down behind closed doors? Then order your copy of Inside the Revolving Door, Chronicles from the Human Resource Department, to get a peek of what goes on behind the scenes. This book is now available in paperback and Kindle and on Amazon.com. And that is our breaking news for the day. Thank you for tuning in to watch this week's episode of The Women Behind the Legends. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Women Behind the Legends. Be sure to come back next week to watch the conclusion of our backstories. If you don't like, if you don't like it, delete yourself. <laughs>